rudder and fin what I do sometimes guys is just photocopy uh, an area if it's uh, a small bit like this just stops it having to uh, crease up and everything under my under my arms if it's much smaller and I don't particularly want to cut the plan into lots of little bits so what I've done is just photocopied the fin and rudder there I've identified the sheet with the components on they all start with an R so what I think I'll do is to start by pinning uh, the actual hinge posts in position. Don't put pins through bits of wood this small, they, uh, they'll just split and cause you problems. Put plenty on there because it's end grain I'm sticking it to, so I want to make sure that it's Soaking in well. Do not glue this to this piece. I say don't glue it. The thing is, it's, it, this part is separate from that part because this is the rudder. But it makes it a lot easier if you remember I glued uh, the tailplane and elevator together. It makes it a lot easier to sand the two components to get a really nice finish. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to couple of very small blobs just to hold it while I sand it then I can split it apart okay it's just enough to hold it and then I'll run the blade down there and take it apart and it'll allow me to give it a nice sanding the other thing you can do is just put a blob of CA down and just drop your components into it like that actually easier remember hold the structure down probably stuck to the plastic we'll have a look nope come off clean good okay there we are thin and rudder ready for sanding you can sand it all in one go flats and then curving it around and the fin a uh, fin is going to match the rudder which is what you want tail plane made sits on top of there that sits on top of there it'll just need lots of sand in now that bit there is angled to allow for the elevator to go down because the elevator is right up right up front there yeah it lines up perfect we will have to angle the back of that piece just to allow for the um, elevator to drop down but I'll do that when I sand so what have we got we've got the fuselage we got the tailplane we got the fin and rudder uh, let's have a look at the wing it's coming along really quickly isn't it and it started uh, yesterday afternoon so what I've done, I've, I've cut the wing plan in half. I'm going to build one side at a time. Um, basically, you've got the main spar, or one of the main spars, of, of these here. These are L6s, uh, big button L5s. They're going to be uh, laminated together. Uh, this, of course, will form a reasonably strong structure having glued them together they are um, angled on the end rib for the dihedral which fits to the center section which i haven't built yet so they'll laminate together and go there l6 is a solid quarter inch piece which is going to go there again it's angled at the end for the rib and then the other quarter inch one which is l9 which goes like that the trailing edge section is this one, L7. We'll go in there. And of course all the wing ribs. The wing ribs are um, very specific because you've got the dowel leading edge, this bit here. Obviously ribs W2, 3 and 4 only have a center hole there, there and there, the other ribs won't. 
<coughs> which is why it's important to make sure you get the ribs in the right place. I'm going to apply a liberal coating, pardon me, of white glue. And this should add a quite a deal of strength, I would think, as a main spar. Two pieces of wood glued together are a lot stronger than one piece of wood laminated. You know, laminations are a lot stronger. Lay that over the top of that. Might turn it over. Line those slots up. Get pretty much lined up actually. Then turn it back over. Pin at an angle and it won't come up. That slot isn't quite lining up. These are lining up, but these run out slightly by a sort of a one and a half mil by the time you get to this end. No big deal, as long as the ribs are parallel to the rib. It's printed on the plan. The spar has had half an hour and it's looking pretty good. So the pointy bit goes to the wingtip of course. The other spar is this one here. That one goes there. Again that rib will go down into there like that. This is a joy to build. Start construction. The end rib I say is angled already. I won't pin the wingtip down yet because the I'm going to pack it up slightly to bring up to the rib because the, the groove in the cut spar is slightly deeper than the thickness of the of the uh, wingtip balsa so I want to pack that slightly and it will just come up ever so slightly no problem. I think it might be an idea to maybe pin this spar down And then that's in position and held nice and tight to the board. So let's just get that to the right length, which is there. I'm going to put a pin through diagonally facing this way so it can push against the back edge. Let's just put a wing rib in here. is the way I suggest you do it. I'm now going to pin the back edge here through the rib, the main spar rather, into the building board and that's holding it down nice and hard as well to the building board. By pushing this way I've pushed into this trailing edge which is fixed. Do the same with the other main spar, important too, so again the same thing, push your pin through into the building board. This is why you need T-top pins, by the way. If you do this with the little glass top pins, the glass tops can break and you end up with a pin rather hard going into your fingertip. That's holding it really down hard onto the, onto the wood. You could, if you wanted, just put one more in the middle, but it seems to be pretty good. I'm going to put the glue directly into there. So it's soaking a little bit into the end grain like that a little bit on each side there so it's going in like that and it's running down nicely into the groove so that's what we want to see push that down and then finally uh, get a little bit of scrap and I'm just going to clean up might build up a little pile of glue here actually so as I can pinch it if I need it. But it's sure a pleasure working with laser cut wood. to put that trailing edge in first. Let's put a bit more glue on it.
anything that's still moving around because glue's pushed off of it as it's gone in I can always just run a little bit in afterwards let's do the end one this is end grain so I'm going to just coat that there like that whoops I say whoops because I've just glued a slot that didn't need gluing yet Wipe that glue off of there, wipe it down there. It's its own grain, get it. Get that out of there. Okay, that just goes on there. Might need a pin in there just to Keep that in nice and tight, I think. Uh, this rib here, there isn't a slot for it in the wingtip section, so I'll have to make a slot there by the look of it. Anyway, it wants to come up. It has to come up in a gradual curve, which it does beautifully by the look of it because it's got to butt square on. If you see that square on to the dowel when I put it in and then the little box. So let's just take that off and then the little box go on. Little nick out there just to accept the uh, end of that rib. All right, now we put in the main spar. So I'm gonna start by putting glue in these slots. Make sure it's pressed all the way down. I might put a pin in this thing because it's springing slightly. Like that. The hole in this end, these three holes go down at an angle, which would suggest to me that the this centre spar goes all the way through. Don't chop it off at the end. It'll go all the way through and the holes go down at the correct angle to hold the wing up at the correct angle. So the main the, the spar is uh, parallel to the board, but the wing will be at an angle when I threaded it through. So basically, this piece of dowel is your main spar. Next thing is to probably glue in a leading edge bit like that. I'll cut it off afterwards when it's dry. As I'm going along, I'm just making sure that these ribs are parallel on the plan. And when I finish doing this, I'll turn it over when I take it off and put some more CA in underneath. We can now actually um, put the wingtip on. Up under, get that rib in, bring that around. Like that. in in there hold that there a moment that's exactly halfway up through the leading edge spar now a little bit under these two bits here it's just riding up nicely over the top a bit there a bit there and one there now these little bits here these are your L8 ones. They're little blocks that you put in to build up that you so you can sand. So the transition of the, do you like that word? The transition of the covering won't pinch in here. It will be a little bit smoother. So that's what these blocks do. Obviously I can't glue the one on underneath because it's underneath. I have to wait till I turn the wing over. And that block will shape down and around very nicely so there we have it uh, one wing constructed that didn't take very long at all while I've got it out I'll just pop this piece in underneath here I'll glue it in with CA
There we go. The second wing is built. So now I'm just going to look at the center section. I've got the components out. L1 is that one there, which will go on top of the rib like that. L3. So, so as I don't mix them up, I like, I've just put three little dots on it and four little dots and two little dots. Get the idea. Three goes in there, L4 at the back. Like that. L2. L2 goes just here. These are two uh, W2 ribs go either side. I'm going to start by pinning down the trailing edge on there and I think the best thing to do is to be to glue these in and then pin it all down. Right, I've got a couple of minutes to work this and then we'll offer the wing up. Let's cut it to about there, trim it in a minute, roll it around. So that one's set flush in on there and glued. The center spar goes through here and threads itself onto the wing. But the holes in the wing don't go in at the same height. It starts at top, goes to the middle, goes to the bottom, which is why it's important to keep those ribs in the correct order. And this is your main spar, which goes like that. So the wing will glue up at that angle. I've also got two templates in the box for it to rest on as it does so. So it's, that's the last component built. Um, all that's left now is to um, glue it, uh, sand everything and put some gussets in. I'm gonna put a gusset in there and there. I'll do that now and put a gusset in here. What I've done, I've taken one of the gussets and I've filed a little, uh, you see that, filed a little round bit in it. And I've also, that's uh, the other wing I did it for. And I've also um, angled it to match the rib. So that will then glue in there like that and actually do some good. So I'm going to pop that one in now. So that's that one in. That'll help that little corner. And that is actually every part glued to that wing now, so it's ready for um, sanding. Now, if you remember, I had these rather odd looking bits of wood. They're the same size as the cowl there. Can go on the inside as reinforcements that wouldn't help hurt at all to put those there make that less vulnerable good idea definitely do that I've got two little brackets uh, sorry gussets left over I don't know where they go they could go up there actually look couldn't they to extend that I wonder if that would be a uh, Nothing is showing on the side view. Well, that would help to support the outside of that. Do you know what, guys? I'm going to put them there. I know it only covers the, a little bit of the join, but I've got the piece on the inside, which I fitted. That's a good idea. It's, ex it's at the exact angle. The other bits that I haven't used were these pieces that are marked on the plan that go here. to sort of help support the tailplane, I suppose. Um, I'd prefer to put them on the inside. Maybe that's what they were designed to do. And then I've got the benefit of the width without the ugliness. Not a bad idea. Put that in there. I mean, it's a good idea to have an extra bit of area for the tailplane to sit on. And the other one. Put 
Okay. So pop those on the inside, those two pieces, and we got extra support for the tailplane. Superb. I'm pretty certain it's to clad the bottom front of the fuselage. This is going to give it a load of strength, and the model is a very strong model. Also, I've wanted to glue these in. I'm going to put those on as well. And one more thing I noticed, and that is, I said there was a glut of these little uh, gussets. Um, they certainly put gussets on these cross pieces on top and bottom. So that'll use up all the gussets, which is great. So I'll pop that in there like that. Press it down and we'll hold it for a minute or two. Okay, so that's the cheeks on there, guys. And I'm going to now knock, quickly knock out all of these gussets. They're all done, all cut out, ready to go. So uh, just offered up the first one. The easiest way to do it is put it on a blade and push it in and hold it on, pull the blade out and let go. And there she is. These will add a huge amount of strength as well. So it's free done on that side really quick. I'll work my way around, come back to you shortly. All right, all those little gussets you saw me cutting up and starting to put in. This is the last one. And I've decided to put the uh, cross brace in, oops, halfway down the fuselage, as you'll see when I turn it over. This one here. Um, two reasons. One, I had two gussets left over and two, I think there's bags of room to get me gear in anyway so let's put it in now while I'm while I'm doing it all. Okay so it's all the gussets in. It's unusual to have that. I've never put gussets in there like that before. I've put the triangular pieces on the outside. I've put those other pieces at the back on the inside. I've put the cheek bits on the inside. Um, the only thing left to do then is the bottom sheeting. And I didn't put gussets on these cross bearers because it's going to be sheeted. And because I've got the um, I, uh, somewhere, I've got the triangular pieces to put in <clears throat> there. So let's just start with the sheeting, shall we? The bottom sheeting always goes cross grained, so I'm going to take that back to there and then I should taper it into the fuselage there. That's absolutely spot on, that width wise, absolutely perfect. The other thing, E11, opt for the undercarriage. I've got to extend that slot to, to here, so I'll never get the undercarriage in. Hold that a second. Oh, it's exactly half an inch. I Sometimes I use centimetres, millimetres, sometimes I use inches. That's exactly half an inch. And it's 15 sixteenths in. Just run a file on this edge. Slightly curved. Good. All right, so that's my the undercarriage, and that'll all come out in the sanding. Good solid bottom, good solid top, good solid fuselage, actually, surprisingly light. I've got to do the back edge there. Let's find those little pieces. So let's have those out. Now that one's not going to fit quite the same because I've put those bits of wood on the inside, which I'm, I'm perfectly happy with. Bring it down to the point in the middle there. Right, that will sand nice. So they've got that piece in there. Now for the very last piece, this piece here, I can make a slot in there for that to sit into and put a little plate on the top. Not a bad idea. I think I might do that actually. 
drill a little hole in the rear post there, part, whatever it was, 26, won't commit. So this has got to be glued in quite well because it's going to support the tail wheel. By doing this you can make sure it's flush with the structure you see. So I've just made a little groove here just to take that down a little bit in height just to match the pieces of stick, stirring stick. I've roughed up the silver metal a little bit. Now I'm not going to stick it in yet because it will just get in the way when I cover it. But what I can do is to stick in those two pieces of wood. Stick that in, lift that away, cover it. When it's covered, uh, stick that back in, super glue it in and then put a piece of wood over the top. Just super glue might be enough to hold it there anyway. I can put maybe another piece of the same wood over the top, covered in yellow, that would hold it easily. Now these two uh, pieces of carbon rod, I don't know if you can see that on the plan, they go into the fin and then pass down through the block of the uh, tailplane. And that's what provides strength uh, for the joint. The best way to do this that I can think of is to drill a hole up from the bottom carefully all the way up through uh, the block. I won't be fitting it until both halves have been covered with film and then you can cut a gap where the fin goes and glue it on balsa to balsa uh, with the pins driving up through it to give it added strength. The way I'm going to tackle this is put a hole through there like that and then one halfway between there and the front Got a little twist drill here. These little twist drills are really good because you can control them quite accurately. Putting my thumb beside it because of the glue line, it's just pushing it off the center line. I'm going to try and keep it on it if I can. Not too bad. You'll notice that these these have just been cut off, so they've got a bit of a burr on them, and. Uh, It's, it's deformed the end, so I'm just going to sand, file, whatever you've got to hand. I'm just going to file them into a little point and that will help it to go through. Now, they're probably going to be a bit tight. Oh no, it's a good fit through there. That one looks upright. That one looks upright. Okay, now. What I need to do, and it's not going to be easy, that rudder is coming off now, um, is to put that over there, exactly over the centre line, and holding it at 90 degrees, which it should be just about there anyway, but the idea is for this to be exactly at 90 degrees, turn it over and drill the holes up through. I don't know if it would be as easy as that. Let's have a look. A piece of wood that it's sitting on taper, so I've got a small gap at the top of the 90 degrees there, and a small gap there, so that means it's nice and it looks absolutely spot on. So now what I need to do is to hope that stays in place and continue those drill cuts up inside the fin and the thing is if I can get one in then that will hold it let's just turn it by hand I've got my fingers either side of where the drill hole oops going up that's all right look that's come up through the top and it's exactly in the center of the piece of wood which is rather gratifying so pull that out Push one of those in, and that'll help to support 
the fin. Another one right in the middle of the wood. So I was a bit concerned that I wouldn't be able to do that first time, but you've only really got one shot of it. If you mess it up and it does go off wonky, start again, get everything in place and drill another hole to go up through. Don't try and drill the other the first hole to turn over off centre a little bit to match up. So there we are. That actually, let's take that pin out now. That actually feels pretty solid. So when it's uh, glued, I think it will make a good job of that. A couple of little extras I've done, guys, just to embellish the wing a little bit. Uh, one is this front spar, which I fitted just using a bit of scrap wood from the kit and just let into each rib. That's just to give the uh, covering a little bit more shape as it goes over the top. I just fancy doing that. Um, so it's something you could do or not entirely up to you the other thing i've done um, is i've just replaced the dowel dihedral brace with a bit of carbon tube i just felt that it would just give me a little bit more strength just in case of a heavy landing or cartwheel and to support that i've just put in a little bit of extra wood just again cut from scrap in the kit either side of the rib just to beef it up a little bit okay just thought I'd show you that because that's a little extra you could do for a very little uh, time and cost, okay? So look out for part three, which is going to cover radio install and covering. And then after that will be the maiden flight, which I'm looking forward to. Just like the box art. Cute girl. Cute girl. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it helps you to construct the model cute girl it's a it's a nice little kit it's just um, aimed at more beginners and of course there are no build instructions so this video really should be able to assemble it okay I've given you tips all the way through the build any questions don't hesitate to put a comment down below and I shall answer it pretty quick so thanks for watching hit the like button cheers guys bye